Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh In this video, we will be discussing about the doctrine of basic structure Before we go further to the question and the discussions of the topic First, let me introduce about our group We are from Semper at Meliora group Consists of three members The first one is Wanur Asya binti Wanjurasi Second, Kastina Najwa binti Zambri And last but not least is Nurul Fahana binti Muhammad Fazli And now, let's move on to the question and the discussions For the further explanations Let's see this is the question for our group, which is Tuan Abdul Hamid Muhammad, a retired Chief Justice, wrote by adopting the principle of the basic structure of the Constitution from the judgment of the Indian Supreme Court. Our judges give them some the power to effectively amend the Constitution by deciding that Parliament has no power to amend any part of the Constitution which they will decide on a case by case basis that it cannot be amended. With reference to decided cases, examine critically why there are opposing view as to the application of the doctrine in Malaysia and why it was initially rejected by the courts. So this discussion will examine why this doctrine was about to be rejected in our country. Before going through it in more detail, it is vital to include in this discussion that based on the virtue of Article 4, Class 1 of the Federal Constitution, it provides that this Constitution is the supreme law of the Federation and any law passed after the Merdeka Day which is inconsistent with this Constitution shall to the extent of the inconsistency be void. It means that any provisions that conflicts with Malaysia's federal constitution is invalid to the extent of inconsistency because it is the nation's ultimate law. Therefore, this should be emphasized on this matter, otherwise it will be unconstitutional. Before we move, let's see how the federal constitution was established and started to develop and who started the idea of drafting and creating a federal constitution. It was introduced by the members of the Reid Commission, whereby the foreigners make up the commission in charge of drafting the constitution. The commission was led by Lord Reid and who is the members of commissions? Members of the commission include Sir Lord Reid, Sir Ivo Jennings, Sir William Metcalf, Mr. P. Malik, Mr. Abdul Hamid. So now, let's move to the meaning of the doctrine of basic structure. What is the meaning behind that? So we refer to Danish anak lelaki Tanaf and Lembaga Pencegahan Jenayah and Others whereby the Federal Court Judge Nalini Pathmanathan deemed the following definition by former Singapore Chief Justice Chan Set Kiong to be an excellent articulation of the doctrine which provides that the basic structure doctrine is the constitutional principle that the basic features or basic structure of a constitution cannot be destroyed or immiscreated by a constitutional amendment to be passed by parliament in accordance with prescribed procedures. The origin of this doctrine, it started comments in India and the landmark Indian Supreme Court decision in the case of Kasavananda, Bharati and State of Kerala is credited with firmly establishing the doctrine of basic structure. The term basic structure is nowhere mentioned in the Indian constitution. Thus, legal scholars refer to Kasavananda as a classic case of judicial activism by the Indian Supreme Court. Again, I will make clear about the explanation of the statement that we will be discuss before we move to another part. The doctrine of the basic structure must be rejected in order to avoid abusing the power that had been given to each organ of the government. It is reasonable with what has been explained above which constitutional amendments should be limited to the extent that they do not destroy or reduce features and expect they are part of the basic structure. If the doctrine of basic structure is adopted, Parliament will not have power to amend the constitution even in accordance with Article 159 of the Federal Constitution, whereas that is their jurisdiction to amend the constitution. 
the parliament has the right to amend if it is necessary to do so. However, at the end, the constitution cannot be amended totally by applying this doctrine. On the other side, the judiciary will abuse the power by using that power excessively, whereby they limit the power of parliament to amend the constitution by declaring that the law is as ultra-virus as they may think. Therefore, it abuses the principle of separation of power which has been determined for each of the branches of government. Now, I will proceed to the argument in favour of rejecting the doctrine why this doctrine was about to be rejected. Uh, by applying this doctrine, it is about to again the Article 159, which are this article grants the Parliament the authority to amend any provisions of the Constitution as long as the procedure outlined in Article 159 is adhered to. The Constitution itself does not state that certain clauses cannot be amended. In actuality, it is not allowed, it is not fair to say that to say that the Parliament is not allowed to amend the Constitution or any provisions law because the fact that parliament is created the constitution and applying the doctrine of basic structure is equivalent to declaring that any provisions of the constitution that contradict the basic structure is unconstitutional because this basic structure is not only uh, applied to the new provision but also both new provisions and existing provisions that conflict with the basic structure this is due to the fact that both contradicts the basic structure and are therefore invalid. On that basis, we will argue that Article 11 is part of the basic structure. Therefore, provision in list 2nd, 9th schedule state lists that contradict Article 11 are invalid and void. Um, in addition, applying this doctrine is equivalent to saying that the law made under the state list, even if they are about Islamic percept and only apply to Muslim, are invalid. Article 11 is said to apply to all part of the Muslim. Uh, in another way, we can say that when the state assembly or don can pass law under the state list, but if it is declared as violate the Article 11, they will be declared as null and void. The best example we can give is that uh, when done in the legislation, legislation making it an offence for a Muslim to commit adultery, consuming intoxication, uh, liquor, or fail to pay zakat as it is prohibited in our religions, and then uh, the basic structure people will argue that the Article 11, which provide free Freedom of religion is the basic structure. This means that Article 11 guarantee a person's freedom, whether he want to commit adultery, uh, drink, intoxicating drinks, or pizza cut, it is based on their freedom, based on their choice. As a result, the law is invalid and void. In fact, we must know that Article 11 should not apply to offences committed under the state list because the state list is an exception to the general provisions of the constitution. It allows religious law to be made applicable only to Muslims as tried by the Sharia court. The law is valid as long as uh, it concerns Islamic precept, regardless of whether it contradicts Article 11 or not. Now, we come to the climax part of the discussion where we are about to present on the opposing view toward the doctrine based on the decided cases. In Malaysia, the doctrine of basic structure was first noticed in 1977, which is in the case of law question and governments of Malaysia. Later, in 1980, which is three years later, in Panchi Ho and Public Persecutor. And again in 1983, it was discussed in Mark Coding and Public Persecutor. In each case, of three cases uh, mentioned before, the federal court refused to rule on whether the doctrine applied to the amendment power in the federal constitution. So uh, it means that we doesn't have the complete or the firm answer whether this doctrine was applied in our country or not. 
the case of Pan Chee Ho and public prosecutor in 1977, Lord President Sufyan compared the way uh, in which the federal constitution and the Indian constitution were founded and say that uh, in regards to the Indian constitution, when the British left India, they did not leave a full-fledged constitution. Instead, the Indian themselves had to make do with the previous constitutional provision, which had been very slightly amended. The Indian did not want the British to give them their constitution as a gift. They desired to write it by themselves. As compared to the federal constitution in our country, uh, the federal constitution was the result of joint Anglo-Malayan effort and parliament had no hand and even no idea in its drafting. This means that our country received entire constitution from them. It is a gift from them and the idea did not originate from our legislature and I think this is a very key uh, differences between the Indian constitution and the federal constitution. Um, in addition, the in, uh, in the Indian constitution, contain a preamble which stayed quiet explicitly that the constitution was made by the people of India in their constituent assembly. The Indian constitution also contain in part 4 a uh, relative principle of state policy which in 15 articles set out national objective which it was too desirable that the state should promote. Compared to the federal constitution, it lacked a preamble and no directive principle of state policy compared to Indian constitution. That's why we uh, in our country cannot apply as the constitution itself is very different in terms of the founded and the created themselves. In 2007, through the case of public prosecutor and Ko Wah Kwan, the federal court rejected the doctrine of basic structure with a 4-1 majority. Uh, however, the courts departed from and overturned Ko Wah Kwan case in the decision of Sumanih Jaya Sundaram Berhan and Land Administrator of the District of Hulu Nangai. Indira Gandhi Mutu and the Director of Islamic Affairs Para and others and other appeals and Alma Nudo Adenza and public prosecutor and another appeals. Despite this, the position of ouster clauses took a few a few unexpected turns last year. The federal court upheld the decision of Ko Wah Kwan by rejecting the doctor of basic structure in the Maria Jin Abdullah and Director General of Immigration and Ravin Poti, uh, Anak Delaki, Kodis Varan and Lembaga Pencergahan Jenayah and others. The court also rejected the doctrine of basic structure in the case of Maria Chin Abdullah and Ketua Pengarah Immigration and Anato. The appellant, Maria Chin Abdullah, was to receive the 2016 Guangzhou Prize from the South Korea May 18 Memorial Foundation. On 15 May 2016, the appellant, in her attempt to board flight MH66 to South Korea, was stopped by the immigration authorities at Kuala Lumpur International Airport. She was informed by the authorities just before boarding that she was restricted from traveling abroad as a travel ban had been imposed on her. Maria Chin sued the Director of Immigration for his decision to bar her from traveling to Korea. However, this challenge was opposed by the government by virtue of Section 59 and Section 59A of the Immigration Act. These provisions have the effect of denying any part the power to review the DGI's decision and also to deny the right to be heard before any executive decision was made by the immigration authorities. Consequently, the constitutionality of these provisions were challenged for violating the Basic Structure Doctrine. In rejecting the Basic Structure Doctrine, the Federal Court's reasoning is fourfold. First, it reviewed constitutional documents which suggested the Parliament could decide the Court's jurisdiction. Abdul Rahman Sabli, Federal Court Judge, in determining the constitutionality of Section 54 and Section 54A of the Immigration Act and the limitation in judicial power, the source of judicial power in the Federation was Article 121, Class 1 of the Federal Constitution and not any other article. In the present case, Federal Law, White Section 
1959e had expressed with irresistible clearness that the two high courts could only review the procedural non-compliance and not the substantive decision of the decision maker. If the two courts ignore the limitation imposed by Section 59E in the nature of separation of powers and judicial independence, they would be disqualifying Article 121 Clause 1 of the Federal Constitution, which they were not at liberty to do. Second, it observed important constitutional changes such as the enactment of the Malaysia Act 1963. It reasoned that the existence of the basic structure doctrine would have rendered these changes invalid, which is contrary to the political reality. Therefore, the doctrine of basic structure cannot be adopted as it makes it impossible for the parliament to make amendment to the constitution even if it is their power. Also, this doctrine would make the amendment or law that was introduced void on the grounds of being inconsistent with the basic structure of the federal constitution. Therefore, the federal constitution cannot be suborned to any doctrine like basic structure in order to protect the supremacy of the constitution. Abdul Rahman, federal court judge in the case of Maria Chin, said that no doctrine of law could override Article 151, Clause 1, which stipulated in clear language that the jurisdiction and powers of the high courts and inferior courts were, as may be counted by or under federal law. The third reason is, it resulted to all cases that labor principle, which is separation of powers, as no more than a political philosophy that does not exist textually within the federal constitution. Lastly, it treasured that abuse of parliamentary power to undermine the federal constitution would not happen. As conclusion, we agree with the statement made by Tun Abdul Hamid Muhammad that by applying the doctrine of the basic structure, the power of parliament will be restricted to amend the constitution and the judiciary will excessively use the power whereby they limit the power of parliament to amend the constitution by declaring that the law is ultra-various as they maintain. By referring to the case of Marajin Abdullah and Ketua Pengarah Immigration and another, 2021, Section 59 and Section 59A were not void for being inconsistent with Article 4, Class 1, with, with Article 121, Class 1 of the Federal Constitution. The limitation of the court's review power by Section 59A fell squarely within the power of Parliament to legislate pursuant to the power conferred on it and was not in breach of the doctrine of separation of powers, which could not in any event prevail over the federal court. Before we move, let's see how the federal constitution was established and started to develop and who started the idea of drafting and creating a federal constitution. It was introduced by the members of the Reid Commission, whereby the foreigners make up the commission in charge of drafting the constitution. The commission was led by Lord Reid and who is the members of commissions? Members of the commission include Sir Lord Reid, Sir Ivo Jennings, Sir William Mecker, Mr. P. Malik, Mr. Abdul Hamid. That's all from us. Thank you for listening.